This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Pat Kiernan and Rita Crosby, uh, co-host, The Ride Home, 77 AM, <laughs> WABC, New York, heard every day from 5 to 6 PM. How are you guys doing? We're well. Yeah, we're fabulous. That, the hour flies by. We're having a ball. Yeah, it really, it really does go <laughs> go quickly when you're talking that short a program on the radio. I'm, I'm, I'm on TV for hours, and, and that that's a, a longer stretch, but the radio is fast. And, and you, the you, two you, of us, you know, we're news pros, so we talk all the time. We play off each other, and there's no shortage of news. It's like, wow. Chemistry right away. By the way, New York One, you hang around over there? I, I did mornings <laughs> on New York One on TV. I've done that for 17 years. The, the radio thing is newer. Rita and I have been together it's just since the beginning of the year. And people know Rita from MSNBC and Fox and mm -hmm. a whole range of other places. Uh, chemistry immediately. Well, because as Rita said, we, yeah. we both know the news, and, and we bring that journalist frame of reference to everything we do. And we have a lot of fun. You know, I think when you do a show together, I'm sort of, I guess, his second wife in some ways. I haven't told his first wife, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll wait, get that'd to be that. a good idea. Yeah, maybe yeah, I'll yeah, hold yeah, on. Right. But we have so much fun. And I think because we're both so <clears throat> instinctively news junkies that five minutes before air, if the story changes, we instinctively sort of know what to do. We play off each other well, and I think that makes it so much easier. You don't have to say, hey, gosh, we should lead with this story. We both know and love it. Yeah, there's a level of comfort that you know that you can change gears at the last minute, and, yes. and everybody's going to be along, along for the, the ride on that. You know, it's so interesting, and people talk about preparing, and, and um, you prepare for, for these programs, and, and it's... A, we were supposed to prepare for this? Yeah, nobody told us this. Well, it's clearly, yeah. I didn't know we were going to be grilled worry, by they, Steve Adubato. I had no idea Don't worry about it. It's, it's <laughs> preparing. It's, you know, I, my job is prepare. But okay. what's interesting is because, because, you know, I have filled in yes. on, on radio. Uh, and done a great job, by the way. I've had you on as a guest. I love it. Yeah, well, it's, it's but, but when you're hosting, it's so interesting because I used, when I used to get ready to host on radio, I'd go my notes and, and they go, no. Callers, quick, react, respond. And I'm thinking, preparing for radio is very different than what you think it is. Yes, you have to be aware, and, but if you can't you prepare too much, be too structured in your head, and not be spontaneous and responsive enough? That's a good question. But I will find, because our show, The Ride Home, is really a fast ride, and we don't take callers. Yeah, we actually play newsy. off each other. I mean, the, there, there's yeah. a lot of news in the hour. And there's a lot of preparation. I think ours is a little different in that regard because we are you know, constantly seeing what's happening in the news, constantly trying to add layers, make it interesting, make it new. Um, both of us you know, want to make it 110% great. And I think for that reason, we are doing quite a bit of preparation. But we also know, hey, five minutes before, we might have to not have a single script in front of us or a single idea in front of us sure. because something's broken. But to, but to your point, it's different from television where the whole hour might be set up in the teleprompter. You know, we'll interrupt each other. We'll add to the other person's thought. And that gives radio an energy that we don't always have. Talk about timing on TV. between the two of you. Talk about the timing. Um, I get all the time, and then if there's something left over, I give it to Pat. Is that the plan? That's the way. You know, you're this, married. This, you're I, married. You hold, know hold, hold on. Do you go along with this, or do you even have a vote? What? Uh, no, I don't know. It just it seems to work out. <laughs> it, it, it seems to work out that, that, that we, we share the time. So sometimes I come back from the commercial break. Sometimes Rita 60, comes back from the commercial break. It's about 50-50. It's about yeah, maybe and some 50, days, you maybe know. Maybe 55 for me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 56. <laughs> yeah. What I'm curious about as well is when, I, when I've listened to The Ride Home, and it does go quickly, is that while you don't have callers, you have guests. Mm -hmm. Those guests, people want, because you have producers, you have strong mm -hmm. producers, but both of you have a strong hand in who you want. Mm -hmm. Fair to say? Very much. Yes, yes, we're, we're very involved in that and have a sense as the day begins, you know, who we would like to get, whether they're available or not, it's another question. Because you are news junkie, junkies, yes. if you will, know the content, know yes. the, and because you have great Rolodexes. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too. We know, gosh, okay, this story's broken. God, if we could get A, B, C, or D, and sometimes we end up getting all of them, and, right. and it's a full deck, and you go, okay, well, who do we take out? That's yeah. a good day. Um, and then other days you go, gosh, so this suddenly has broken. That's the joy also of news because something is always changing. And especially if you look at the tri-state area, there is so much going on, especially these days. I mean, one day we're covering ISIS. The next day, you know, we're talking about Governor Cuomo. I mean, there's so many different Let, layers. Let's talk about what connects. Let's, uh, because even though it's a tri-state audience program, there are national and international topics. So, Pat, let me try this. Yeah. Are there personalities, let's say, in the tri-state area 
that if you talk about them no matter when it is, they are they seem interesting to your audience. Well, there has to be familiarity, right? I mean, you can talk about Governor Christie and Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio and know that everybody knows who you're talking about. There can be a fascinating story in, mm -hmm. in one of the suburban communities that everybody outside that community has a harder time relating to. So we do try to sometimes choose through that filter that if it's happening outside the city and outside the state governments, Mm -hmm. Then you got to get a little more creative well, and make it so that back. everybody can relate to the story. Sorry for interrupting. Be because I'm uh, a Jersey guy, mm -hmm. what makes Chris Christie interesting? He's <laughs> real. <laughs> what? What are you going to do? He's so real. And that's what I love about him because as someone who was in Washington for many years too, you remember I covered White House for Fox News. I was a senior correspondent. I'm so used to, we are both, all of us are used to these canned politicians. Yeah. And he's fascinating. He's real. He says what he what he thinks sometimes more than he would like. Um, but he's a joy to cover, and he's straightforward, and he's fun. I mean, I wish everybody had that sort of larger than life personality. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, by the way, I don't mind plugging the fact that we have an in depth uh, conversation at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. A sit down in front of several hundred uh, guests with uh, Governor Christie, and it will go. be Good. as engaging and yeah. interesting. Yeah. You always have good stuff with uh, them. Unplug Governor Christie yeah. for one hour. Love it. You could I, do I, a whole I, day. I, I, love, <laughs> I love that he will sit down with you for that. I mean, one of our, our goals in the program has been to convince uh, Andrew Cuomo to actually do some interviews. What's the difference between the two of them in terms of person, wow. public persona? Why, why do you wow. see that? Pattern? Everything. Yeah. Uh, well, what everything? Uh, Total opposites. It, it, they're, they're, the personality is different. The way they deal, with, particularly in the, uh, you know, for our lens of how they deal with the media. It's it's just uh, Andrew Cuomo loves to control everything. Chris Christie likes the fact that sometimes he just gets to speak off the top of his head, and if not everybody likes what he says, that's their problem right. as much as it is his. <laughs> Andrew Cuomo does not like to mix it up. Andrew Cuomo doesn't, especially in the yeah. last few months, doesn't like to answer questions from anybody. I He's mean, much more and, and, reserved. And I mean, this is one of my concerns about politicians these days, is that they don't sit down in front of everybody and just take questions and converse with them. They think that, that sending out tweets and sending out emails with, with a canned statement substitutes for a conversation like we're having right now. What about Mayor de Blasio? You know what? He's an interesting guy. Um, I think uh, the grade is yet to be given to him. I mean, I think he's done some very extreme things in the city. I'm not sure if it's for better. You know, but um, he certainly has made it interesting. I mean, talk about a contrast in the last mayoral race of who all the candidates are. And every day there's some interesting battle. And for us, I also think it's interesting. We've done the stories of the de Blasio versus Cuomo battles, even within the party. And I've even said this on the air. I think that he's aiming for higher aspirations than New York City. You do think I that? do. I do. I you? absolutely do. You know, I've been told that, actually, by a number of people close really? to Really? That I absolutely do think he's gearing up. And I think maybe the next election, if we don't see a Hillary Clinton or don't see somebody else, we could see, believe it or not, look, there was a guy named Barack Obama who was offered to me years ago for an interview, and I think myself and nobody else took him because you, it was like, who's this guy? If you rewound by a year... The, the thought of that would be preposterous. Right, but now you go, well, wait a minute. You know, I'm not saying for sure, but I think he's trying to prepare in case. Let, let, we talk personalities. Let's talk, by the way, before we move off personalities, Hillary Clinton, a fascinating figure mm -hmm. to yeah, talk but about. Get on with it. Well, yeah, get, what, get on with what? I, I oh, we're doing the, 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 toward the back end of 2014, so we'll <laughs> see what we're talking about getting on with. You're saying, <laughs> you're saying just do it. Pat, you're saying just do it. No, and he's stop talking to you personally. The, the, long dance, <laughs> the, long dance, the long dance about are, on, you, are you running or are you not running? I'm, you're saying I'm, stop fooling around. I'm tired around. of it. It's gone on longer than the Derek Jeter retirement went on. Yeah. Oh, now you're going to criticize. Hold on. I do know. not. Do <laughs> not. He's going. Pat he's Karen, I'm a big in. fan of your work, but do not <laughs> criticize that long goodbye. Come on, come on. It, it turned out fantastic. That last game at Yankee Stadium. Okay, okay. so. It's a storybook. Uh, that, uh, but I, the, he had lost me up until then, and then he won me back. Twice over with that last performance. See, I'm a big Derek Jeter fan, of course. You know, I'm a woman. As am I. As is our president, Mr. Not yeah. say anything about I Derek think Jeter he was and the so Yankees. Great. And by Thank way, you. I like seeing a clean cut athlete out there, too. I, like, I, to I, me, I that's there great. are those. There's nice to have role models in the midst of these. And days, how about, how about if you want to talk about A Rod? It doesn't that get calls, too? Yes. Oh, no, you boy. don't take calls. But you did. But, uh, yes. But that's I can, I can, I can Yeah, that lights up the line. Can not dump on A Rod? Yes, you can definitely dump on him. Definitely. We'll all dump on him. Shifting gears. The topics, all right, other take away from, get away from sports. The ISIS thing, terrorism, and this, this show will air for uh, a couple months, which scares me because you just never know what is going to happen. Um, 
the topic of terrorism, yeah. A, does it get the reaction, no matter when it is, and B, do you avoid in any way talking about it? I think we have to talk about it. Um, I think our story reflects what the most important stories of the day is. And if it is something that's happening, it certainly is. Um, people care about security. We're here in New York City. We know it's the number one target, terrorist target in the world. And I think we can't deny that it's out there. Of course, you know, you always worry about are we giving too much attention to certain things. But I think when you talk about safety in people's homes, that is top priority. That, I think terrorism is an important story. And people are very fascinated by it. They're glued to it because they're concerned, and rightfully so. But there's a way to do it with the internet, too. Not scared. The city, right? I, right. I, mean, I mean, you see that right. sometimes. It's that it, balance. You don't want to feel like you're putting them in paralysis. Scaring everybody and, you know, here, number one terrorist target. Uh, you, you, can, you can have an intelligent discussion about that and be prudent about what we're doing to keep the city safe without trying to bring the city to a halt. Okay, I'll throw another topic at you. Tell me if this is engaging or interesting. Getting people to talk about, or not people to talk about, getting people to listen to and be engaged by talking about <clears throat> Gridlock in Washington and how nothing ever gets done, or have people said, all right, so tell me something else that's new? I think they care about politicians who aren't doing their job, whether it's in Washington or whether it's in the tri-state area. I mean, you know, when everything was happening with Malcolm Smith, um, when things were happening... You're talking about uh, legislator Malcolm Smith yes, here in New York. Yes, and of course also the Moreland Commission. People are fascinated but, 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 by that. Take a step back, uh, devil's advocate. If people want less government, Government doing not as much. I know this sounds crazy, Pat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if government is gridlocked, yeah, and it's not doing here, much, isn't that what here's people the problem? Want? Yes. The problem, but they still want the problem effective. is that there's always an election. <laughs> there, 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 the election cycle is so frequent that nobody in this country ever makes a long-term decision, because there's always somebody else's election coming around the corner, and nobody makes a decision on a. a four-year time frame or a ten-year frame time frame. They just make a decision on on what they think will keep them in office tomorrow. I mean, we, there's a big story about, you know, the Amtrak tunnels uh, in and out of Penn Station uh, in, in terrible condition. We knew this. Nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody does anything about infrastructure. Are you get people excited about that? No. Why not? Like, I mean, you can that's try. See, I, just, I, just, I, I don't, it doesn't I stop me from booking guests in that, but it's, it, yeah. it's hard to get people excited about that. I don't that. think it's, like, top topic number one, but I think you can con convince people it's important, because it is, as Pat is stressing. If you say, look, you're spending X money, What's happening to your money? Mm. Um, what's going on? You elected how many this urban person. Planning you know? engineers have you booked? How many engineers? Yeah. You know, like, like public broadcasting. Them. We talked to urban planning engineers. <laughs> you, you probably do more we're than a lot of people. Special. Yes, because we're public broadcasting. <laughs> we don't right. do it. Who will? Right. But I'm sorry. Before I let you go, I got a couple minutes left. The future of talk radio, mm -hmm. with with the internet and every digital mm -hmm. world. Uh, excited about the future? Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the news world, which we cover every day and breathe mm -hmm. it 24/7. There are constant stories. It is constantly exciting. People are constantly tuning in. I can't tell you how many times I walk down the street and, you know, having been on television for so many years, for more than two decades now, <laughs> I don't say that, I usually say two or three years, but anyway. So Pat and I, I'll walk down the street, but I heard you today, and they get excited to hear and share the stories. And I think it's more important than ever, given the way the world is right now, how complex it does is. It, does, and it, one, excuse me, does it matter where they hear you, Pat? No, it doesn't, Car, but, but one, iPad, of the, one of the big things that WABC has identified is that the one thing the Internet can't take away from you is if you have live and local programming, people aren't going to find that anywhere else. So, yeah. so that's been a big push is, is live and local. And, yes, you can listen to it later on a podcast, but uh, yeah, it's good to have a, a sense of urgency that you want to listen to this now, and that mm -hmm. motivates people quick, to turn uh, on the radio. Uh, uh, TV or radio? You. I, you love. I, I love doing both. I, I, I've been doing yeah. my morning job for 17 years, but the the radio thing gives you an immediacy that you you don't get. I, you want to get a good guest, you just phone them. What's Pat, Pat's picks? Pat's mm -hmm. picks is my uh, my website where I, my favorite news stories from the the newspapers and elsewhere are up <laughs> every day. Yeah, it's challenging every day. You got to pick what would you like, right? It's a lot to read. <laughs> well, that's He's the, not all no, looks. There's but, but brains curation in Curation is a big part of the internet now. So there's a, a million things out there. Here are five that I think you should look at. Absolutely. So, okay, let, let's, let, even though we're public broadcasting, it is okay. We're allowed to plug. So, you don't mind I, uh, if I let people know where they can sure. find you? Absolutely. Right absolutely. Every day from 5 to 6 p.m., your ride home will be made more engaging, more interesting, more challenging, mm -hmm. more provocative than ever before if you tune into uh, 77. AM, WABC, with Pat Kiernan and Rita Cosby.
great stuff every day. Thank you so All much. Right. Good Thank to you. be here. Thank you. Thank so you, wonderful Pat. to be great with you. you. Thank good you. Stuff. Thank One you. on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Meridian Health, Felician College, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Cone Resnick, Investors Bank, the New Jersey Education Association, and by the Ohlendorf Center. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.